From the nation's capital, the McLaughlin Group, an unrehearsed program presenting inside opinions and forecasts on major issues of the day. GE is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. GE. From residential to commercial lighting, we bring good things to life. Here's the moderator, John McLaughlin. Issue one, happy days are here again. The 1992 Democratic National Convention opens in New York on Monday, and the stage is set for a grand display of party unity. Texas Governor Ann Richards will chair the four-day event. On Monday night, New Jersey Senator Bill Bradley will be the featured speaker. On Wednesday, New York Governor Mario Cuomo will put Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton into nomination for President of the United States. Governor Clinton is assured the nomination on the first delegate ballot. Blacks are on board, despite Jesse Jackson's problems with an all-Southern ticket. The only potential troublemaker is Jerry Brown. The former California governor has yet to endorse Clinton and to release his 613 delegates. But by close of business Wednesday, Brown is expected to join the love-in. And finally, this week, Governor Clinton ended the suspense and named Tennessee Senator Albert Gore as his running mate. Question, what will be the big news out of the Democratic Convention next week? Freddie the Beatle Bonds. <laughs> there will be no big news, but the story will be Democratic unity. This will be an extraordinarily successful Democratic Convention, and that's the problem. The problem is they will all be there. Every time the word choice is mentioned, except in relation to schools, there will be practically a standing ovation in favor of the absolutist uh, position on uh, on abortion, which is not the majority position in this country. They'll cheer for gay rights. They'll get all excited about the embrace of Jesse Jackson and Clinton. And this is, uh, there will be a backlash from that. These are not, uh, it will not be a majority message. Clinton, as a candidate, will send one, but the convention won't. Eleanor. I think Freddie's carrying a little Republican water here, uh, hauling out the old liberal shibboleth. That's going to be very hollow when people want to hear about the future. The news out of this convention will be New York City will acquit itself with honors. Mario Cuomo will confound uh, his critics and be magnanimous towards Bill Clinton. And the only fatality will be the liberal wing of the Democratic Party because Bill Clinton and Al Gore are charting a third way, moderate, so that Freddie Beetle Barnes can't get away with all the things he just said about absolutist positions. You, you remember you in, wish. You remember I in know. 1988 Ann Richards' uh, burlesque George Bush by saying he was born with a silver foot in his mouth? And where was George? That, re that refrain. Will there be any of that in this convention, do you think, Jack? Well, I mean, the picking on Bush right now is really unnecessary. Uh, he's, a, he's a political cripple at the moment. They, um, so you don't see the, much of that. No, I, there won't be any big. There won't be any big story. The, the, the significant story about the, this convention, apparently, as a, as a, as a reflector of the Democratic Party, is that the liberals are willing to swallow a lot of things that they wouldn't have swallowed in the past, because they want to win the election. They think they have a chance to do so. More time. Uh, I disagree with you all about Jerry Brown's uh, come come back to the to the fold and the embrace of of, of Bill Clinton. Who's talking uh, about he, Jerry Brown? He's Jerry Brown. Well, that's it. John uh, it did. seems to me that the that that Jerry Brown is likely to walk out, and I wouldn't be surprised. So but what, what to, I wouldn't be surprised, but what some of his 600 delegates don't uh, announce that they're voting for Ross Perot on the first ballot. You know, just in order to embarrass the party. There are there are about 300 of those people that even the even the Brown staff people regard as wild people and uncontrollable. Yeah. There's, 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 a, there's an argument you can make. There's an argument and is being made. I mean, some of the people. Some of the Democrats, Clinton people, think it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a roll call. Because they put not any real suspense, but they put a little showmanship in the thing. If Brown puts his name in, they go ahead, rather than, rather than going over the side ahead is, of time. Is anything going to be said at this convention about Ross Perot? Is he going to be attacked in any way? Is anything going to be said about him? Well, what do you just think? that he's a guy with no ideas, and they'll be accurate about that. But let me go back so to So there this. will be some yeah, criticism yeah. of Perot? We should, well, no, very little, bail, very little. Bail. But, John, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, uh, the question is on this... Uh, on the abortion issue. Remember the ABC exit poll in 1988 showed that for a third of the voters, abortion was the number one issue. Now, the Democrats have taken an absolutist position. Lee Hamilton, uh, one of the reasons he was dropped 
uh, as the leading candidate for running mate for Bill Clinton was because he was in favor of these reasonable Fred, restrictions in Pennsylvania, Fred, which are popular with 80% of the American Fred, people. As hard not as you, you try, as hard as you try, the convention in New York is not going to be a referendum on abortion. We'll and see. Jim, Just Jerry Brown, Brown, no, they won't allow it. They won't let us discuss it. He has to say he is a pipsqueak politically. Fred was right his first time around when he said this is going to be democratic unity and this is but, but, a new democratic a party. Fred, the New York Democrat is credible to win an election. Fred San does, Francisco wait, Democrat Fred, is gone. Just a second. Fred has a point that Bill Clinton and Al Gore, you're quite right, they are the DLC twins. They're both, this is the takeover. DLC, Democratic, Democratic Leadership Council, Council, a rump conservative group wait, within what? the Democratic no party. Rump. Wait a minute, no longer rump. They are now, they were d despised by the liberals for years. Now they are the party. I mean, both, both nominees are DLC people. Uh, the problem is, is that a lot of the delegates are returnees from the NEA and other liberal quarters who will be, as Fred says, uh, applauding yeah, gay rights and that NEA kind of stuff. The NEA is firmly in Bill Clinton's exactly. path. That's, they're they're that's right there good. for him. That is and not gay good. rights will be affirmed. The Democrat, they will wait, not wait, be cheered for four wait a nights. The Democratic Party still include some liberals more. I know you don't know. like that. I know. But there are still include some they are not hitting the picket chart. They're an important they're an important constituency of the Democratic Party. And you know how they got there? They got elected because they were behind know, a candidate who got we gotta get that's how they look, got there. Look, the point is what kind of a message does the Democratic Party send? Does it send the centrist message of the DLC, or does it send a message of, of wild, old-fashioned liberalism? Once message again, of once again, I am required to tell you what's going to happen next week. The convention will be used to outline the Democratic, the new Democratic Party's agenda for change with just a sprinkling of criticism for George Bush and possibly even more veil for uh, Ross Perot. Exit question. The exit question is as follows. Thursday's the last day of the convention. Assume a poll begins on Friday, okay? Where will Bill Clinton score in that post, first post-convention poll? Percentage-wise, in one, two, or three? I think it'll be first, about 35%, but like the polls now, it'll all be margin of error uh, with Bush and Perot. Illinois. I think he'll be first by five points, but the percentage... Meaning what, about 35? Well, yeah, the percentage points are not as important. Look at his negatives and his positives. Exactly. His positives are going to come up, and his negatives are going to go down. That's what he needs. Jack. Well, that's, that's exactly right. What do you think? That's right. Clinton ahead by 10, I think. You mean 38? Something like that. Uh, yeah. Closer to 35, more ton, and he'll be in first place. By the way, Clinton's choice of Al Gore should come as no surprise to our viewers. It was predicted two weeks ago by the present host of this program. <laughs> Fasten your safety belts, okay? <clears throat> An all Southern presidential Democratic ticket for the Democrats. <clears throat> Bill Clinton, Al Gore, strategy being Midwest, South, border states. Issue two, baby boomers unite. The running mate I have chosen is a leader of great strength, integrity, and stature. We have watched for 12 long years as the Republican administration, still in power, has driven this country into the ditch. Let's take a closer look at the Democratic vice presidential nominee. Born Washington, D.C., son of Albert Sr., a U.S. Senator from Tennessee, 18 years, and a U.S. Congressman, 14 years. 44 years of age, wife Mary Elizabeth Tipper Gore, four children, Baptist, Harvard University, B.A. cum laude, U.S. Army, volunteer, enlisted man, two years, Vietnam War, one tour, six months, Tanglewood Home Builders Company, Tennessee, founder and president, five years. The Nashville Tennessean, daily newspaper, editorial writer, and investigative reporter, five years. U.S. House of Representatives, Tennessee, eight years. U.S. Senate, Tennessee, seven years, six months, and currently. President of the United States, candidate for 1988. Author, Earth in the Balance, Ecology and the Human Spirit. Americans for Democratic Action, ADA premier liberal rating system out of a perfect liberal 100, 75 for 1991, 65 career. Net worth, $500,000. <laughs> Was Gore a good choice? Eleanor Clift, 
I must say, looking at some of that food footage, it looks like the old beefcake uh, <laughs> ticket. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it is a good choice. Uh, first of all, it reinforces the theme of generational change. His environmental credentials will play well in California. And Tipper Gore will help take some of the heat off of Hillary. Uh, Tipper was made fun of four years ago for wanting to, vol pressuring the music industry to put labels on records. And that issue has come full circle. It's now hers. Yeah, but you well, I want to hear from Jack. He's I didn't say I like it, but it helps <laughs> politically. Gore is a good... Um, Gore's a good choice in the sense that, that he's a very substantial guy on a lot of issues. He's substantial on foreign policy. What about you? National security. Oh, I don't think that matters too much. I, I find it a very, he's, a, he's very valuable to him in the sense that you look at the guy and you know he's solid or something there. I don't think he is, um, I don't think he is a conventional political asset at all, except in a different sense. The, the, people talk about generational change and environment. I think those things, the environmental thing is a very valuable card. But where it's important is with white Southerners culturally conservative white Southerners, if he can help get that white vote up at all in some of those Southern states with a three-way race, he might actually make a difference. There was a way he cases. could have, there is a way though, Jack, I, I agree with you, uh, if Gore does that, that would be incredibly important and would since the election for Bill Clinton. But the way he could have done that was by putting Sam Nunn on the ticket. Nunn, I think, surely uh, would have raised uh, the white vote well, for uh, Clinton in the South and won a lot of those states. None the, 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 real, make the, the real question about this is, why couldn't Clinton himself do that? that? I mean, you would expect the fact is you've already got a Southern well, candidate. Well, it's a three-way race. Well, it's a three-way race, just, and he wants to consolidate just, his base, and then he hopes that if California, for example, yeah, if, if, if Perot collapses, the change voters in California and those states will then go to him okay, because his other, base is then secure. The other key thing, the other key... And he also pulls, he pulls the energies and resources away from Bush the other into, key, into the South, the other, so that Bush cannot, <laughs> cannot function as actively in California. Oh, how, okay. oh, how wise you are. Now, the, look, uh, the, Gore is safe. He is. He has been vetted. He's been. He's been through campaigns before. There's. No, there's no scandal Absolutely about him. Absolutely second. true. Second, and that's not sec necessarily just, true just, in just your candidate. Just. Just a minute. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, sure it is. Well, um, we don't know that. Okay. We always okay. think that. But okay. this the guy other is thing, just second, through the mill. Just a second. Gore. Gore is is a great campaigner among blacks. I've seen him. He, he really turns on this southern accent and he becomes a, like a preacher. The, 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 the one disadvantage, just a second, the one disadvantage with Gore is that he is an environmental extremist. I mean, he will, there will be film of him from Rio with a headband on, you know, <laughs> dancing around with, uh, with, with wish, native dancers. You no, wish no. more. And, and the fact is that he wants to shut down industry, including the auto industry, in order to have a 45 mile per gallon the, uh, uh, cafe the fact is, the people I mean, uh, that this ticket wants to appeal to like Al Albert Gore's environmental position a lot more than like George Bush. No, and Clinton, Clinton should get some for credit ticket. for choosing someone that who has the potential to overshadow him. I mean, Al Gore is Bill Clinton without the personal you never, baggage. You never overshadow the presidential candidate. A Gore lot of people are Clinton. saying they'd like to flip the ticket. Oh, That's well, a I haven't heard anybody thing say, to do. I haven't heard anybody say that, but the uh, the owner of the New Republic, Marty Let's put that to an exit question test view. What's the probability that come November, uh, uh, Gore will have eclipsed uh, the uh, the number one man on the ticket? Zero, none. What it's are not going to happen? No, that doesn't happen. But Clinton has created someone who will be a rival in '96. I'm talking about when Presumably, I just say if the ticket oh, 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 if, I said if the ticket doesn't oh. doesn't win. Jack, what's the probability? Could that happen, do you think? It's, it's about the same as the quail will eclipse Bush. About the same. <laughs> what do you think? I don't think there's any chance. Al Gore is not dumb enough to, to, uh, to eclipse Bill Clinton I think and, and risk I, I his future. I, at least on the basis of the speeches we heard the other day, I thought there was a lot of presence there. I think he's going to get a lot of press. I think you've got... You got respectability yeah. there. Well, Let me get, let's get out on this yeah, right. exit, another qu exit question. How, give, how many points? Well, we, we frequently yeah. say, we frequently hear the wisdom is that the vice, the second yeah. person of the ticket doesn't mean anything. How many points will Gore deliver in the election to uh, Clinton? I think he'll deliver none, but he won't lose any either, which what do you is think? important. I say 1.5, which could be the margin <laughs> of victory. Right. That would be a remarkable deliverance, would it not? No, Fred has got it right. The important thing for Vice President is the doesn't. Do you don't any think, he's gonna z you think he's going to deliver? You think he's going to deliver zero? What do you think? I think he could deliver some some environmentalists in Washington and Colorado, and also some Jews in New York. I think it's a half a point to a point. The Bush Chronicles. This week, President Bush attended the annual summit of seven of the world's industrial leaders, the G7 in Munich. 
The summit results included these. One, to protect aid being flown into Sarajevo, the Bosnian city under siege for 12 weeks with 57,000 dead. The G7 authorized the UN to use force if needed. President Bush said the U.S. will provide naval and air support for the relief effort, but no ground troops. Two, the fate of the all-important global trade agreement, the General Agreements on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, remains uncertain. Although the G7 expects an agreement by the year's end, France's protectionist farm subsidies are the roadblock. But after the French election in September, the road may be open. That GATT agreement, if approved, would add $1 trillion to the U.S.'s $5 trillion economy and four additional trillion worldwide. Three, Russian President Boris Yeltsin was the star of the summit. Yeltsin walked away from, the, from Munich with a multi-billion dollar aid package. Four, whatever positive value the summit had for George Bush, it was clouded by another event this week, the House Judiciary Committee's official demand for the appointment of an independent counsel, sometimes called the special prosecutor to investigate possible criminal violations by high-ranking executive branch officials in giving assistance to the Iraqi regime of Saddam Hussein in the period leading up to Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. The issue is whether officials in the Bush administration arranged for aid from the U.S. to Iraq with the knowledge that the aid was being diverted in whole or in part to Iraq's military program, including its nuclear weapons program. Question, was this a good week, a fair week, a bad week? An inconsequential week for, for George Bush, Mark Kondrak. George Bush, even when George Bush is l helping lead the world, which he did this week. Now, this is very important. The, the, the world is going to organize itself to rescue Sarajevo. The president has re reversed his policy and is, is, is a leader on this issue, legitimately so, but he doesn't get any credit for anything. You know, he does not. Now, next week is the crucial week for George Bush. Next week, uh, during the Democratic Convention, George Bush and Jim Baker are, are going off together to Wyoming to go fishing. Why is that crucial? Because if George Bush doesn't ask Jim Baker to, to come in and rescue the, 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 the campaign in the White House, I think, it's, I think it may be over for Bush. The, the, the worst for Bush this week, well, first of all, that meeting, as I tried to warn you last week, John, amounted to zero, you know, as, as a story, nothing. Jackie the, never and, and, and the fact, I know that. The, I might as well be talking to the wall. Yeah, you see, I don't right. disagree. The, 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 all right, any, on, on the I don't disagree thing. with your perception, Jack. I just disagree with the reality. Wait, that's they, all. That yeah. meeting, it will prove to be important. And yeah. I'll give you the prediction at the end of the show. Go ahead. All right. Anyway, let me, let me finish the point. What was, what, what is really interesting was there was some polling being done while the meeting was being going on after two or three days of, of Bush being prominent on television. And? Meeting with, and he was going down. That's not true. Yes, yeah, it is the true. The poll that came out today, he's five points, he's clear five points yeah, ahead. Beyond no, I'm, I'm, talking about track, I'm talking about tracking and that well, period he was going right I mean, he's, a, he's, got, he's well, a clear John, leader now John, in the John, poll. John, contrary to your prediction of last week that the incumbents club would bail out George Bush, they did more for Boris Yeltsin than they did for George well, Bush. And these yet. glass pictures... I mean, the Japanese can yeah. start buying heavily. Uh, you know, uh, uh, our exports, uh, go John, ahead. John, look, the point is on a week that's not terrible for Bush is an improvement. So he did better this week just because he wasn't uh, uh, sliding like crazy. But, John, you know what they spent most of the time talking about over there was they, uh, they thought that uh, Yugoslavia wasn't falling apart because you predicted that it never would. Uh, on an, uh, let's get out with this exit question. I'm going to read it. Will the Bush-Baker fishing trip that they're now on result in, A, a new chief of staff at the White House, B, a new campaign manager, namely Jim Baker, C, uh, both of the above, or D, none of, neither of the above. I ask you. Uh, actually, A and B, Baker will be chief of staff and, in effect, run the campaign. What do you think? Oh, I'll go for A, and you're going to see George Bush Jr. start circling around Sam Skinner, and you better start playing the music from Jaws. Wow. <laughs> so we're going to get some action right. this week. What do you think, Jack? D. D, neither of the above. What do you think? A. A, he's new chief of staff. He's chief, chief of staff and functional manager of the campaign. Wrong again, Mort. Not A. Probably B, but in... I mean, he's going he's gonna to get a new campaign Bob's manager, and it's going to be Baker. <music> Issue four, Perot Puri, item, Perot's people. Some new names are now backing the Texas billionaire. Calvin Butts, Ace Greenberg, Catherine Hepburn, Leonard Lauda, Dennis Miller, Will Willie Nelson, Paul Nitze, Felix Royton, O.J. Simpson, Martha Stewart, Andrew Tisch, Paul Warfield, and John White, item. Inspector Perot, a private detective, was hired for a period of a year and a half, 18 months, by Ross Perot to gather information, both personal and professional, on an executive who worked for one of Perot's business competitors, so reported the New York Times this week. Perot, however, 
having been familiarized with the story, denies any involvement. I was not involved directly or indirectly. But the investigator says otherwise. He says his orders came right from Perot. Item, gays welcome. Perot made amends with gay groups this week. This was a flip-flop on his earlier statement that he would not appoint a homosexual to his cabinet. Item, angst in text in Dallas. Dissatisfaction is reported to be rampant in the Perot campaign. The volunteers are unhappy with the professionals. And the professionals are unhappy with Perot, namely that he won't listen to them. Item, Veep Blues. Perot is reportedly having difficulty finding a candidate of high stature to run as his vice president. Question, what's the status of the Perot campaign? I ask you, Jack Jamon. <laughs> Hell, a lot better than you think it is. <laughs> he just went, he, he has taken all these hits. He still has the only candidate with a positive about outweighs the negative. He's within the margin of error for a three-way race. They, they are having they are having beefing from volunteers, which is no surprise. Exactly. You get beefing from professionals in your field. Sixty-three percent of his supporters are weak supporters. In addition, well, his, negatives have, his negatives have doubled. They've yeah, gone from 14 to what? 31. 31. 31. That's, That's more than double. Yeah. More than double. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, what, 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 what are George Bush is a 46. Well, forget Bush. Role. We're talking about Perot now. Get, he's, get, he's running he's against Bush. I mean, yeah, but, but John, the gay point is that Perot is beginning to get ahead. There's dissension in the ranks, but he hasn't felt it in the polls yet. But it's beginning to look like he's really got a tough fight to actually win no. but I you know he's still a contender and they're making a lot of concessions to, to conventional politics they're now going to have regular press briefings because they figured out if they don't gin up some news the press will go out and find the we negative stuff. Five seconds each. The horse race numbers are always a lagging indicator and by backing down on gay rights he showed he's just a typical bully that when anybody pushes back he'll back down. Well, what do you and, think? And you know every every time he has to deny something new one of these days they're going to they're going to put uh, side by side pictures of Ross Perot denying something that somebody else what is accusing did, him of he and he'll be rights, he'll be a fibber. What he did on gay rights is the right a thing. One a one word answer, a one word answer. Will Ross Perot as you see his campaign evolving get more than more than 15% of the vote come November? You. Yes. You. Yes. You. Yes. You. No. The answer is right on Mort. No. <laughs> Issue 5. Liver let die. A liver from a baboon was transplanted into a human last week, the first such operation in history. The recipient is a 35-year-old male. After 11 hours of surgery, his doctors say he's doing remarkably well. I think our chances of succeeding uh, are really quite good. I do know this, that the whole thing was done in a very responsible way. The transplant recipient suffers from hepatitis B. People with hepatitis B are not able to receive a liver transplant from another human because the new liver immediately becomes infected with the virus. However, livers from baboons are not susceptible to hepatitis B. To get the liver, a baboon was killed. This caused animal rights activists to go ape. Protesters swarmed the hospital chanting, animals are not spare parts. Okay, fact. Worldwide, 30% of the people waiting for liver transplants die before a liver becomes available. Doctors say that animal donors may be the only way to meet the huge demand and stop these deaths. So, should animals be made available for spare parts, for organ parts, organ transplants in humans? Fred Barnes, what do you think? Oh, I think definitely they should. I mean, uh, look. This is a human-centered environment. We ought to use animals. Look, we eat animals. We eat pork. We eat beef. We eat cows. I mean, come on. Of course we ought to use them for that. Yeah. And these people, these animal rights uh, demonstrators, have the most distorted sense of values of anybody I've ever seen. I mean, to keep some baboon alive and let some person die, and I'll bet you those people are also people who wouldn't do anything to save the life of an unborn child. Are you saying that animals have no rights whatsoever? Zilch. Zilch rights. Hey, wait a minute. Okay, Just a second. I... Look, there is there is an issue, but it's a human it's a human issue to treat animals humanely, so that you don't you know you don't. How uh, do they kill the exactly. baboon? Well, I hope that they put it to sleep. They and, anesthetized uh, and, exactly, the baboon. Exactly. So, but they and, did not wake the baboon. And, they and, removed the liver when the baboon was under anesthesia. The, you call that humane? I do. I call that humane. Uh, and I think that the animal rightsers have done one favor for everybody, and that is to see to it that laboratory animals, for example, are not just cut up and carved up well, and so the whole, on. Well, the whole in, a, point, in, a, in, a, in an outrageous manner. The whole point, I mean, the only the, these baboons are being raised 
being bred only for experimental purposes. That's the whole. I mean, these baboons weren't taken out of, a, out of away from their family well, in do the you think jungle. That, that, is that they were, humane or inhumane? Well, I don't know. They're also breeding a bunch of baboons to be talk show hosts. <laughs> <laughs> That's inhumane. I, I should point out that television sets are placed in the zoo of the New York Zoo, and the the gorillas watch the television sets. And that program, which has the most tranquilizing effect upon gorillas, is this program. Right. Yep. And they, what do you do in your... Is there, a, is there a lesson there for us? <laughs> yeah, and, and do you watch well, the National... the New York Times. You, watch, you probably watch the National Geographic specials in your spare time, too. <laughs> Listen, judging from the company I keep, you'd think I, I would be pro-baboon, but I'm not. I mean, we have crossed this ethical divide already. We, ra we raised uh, minks on a ranch to provide uh, mink coats for people, and I think this could be a nice retirement hobby for you, John, baboon raising. <laughs> Predictions, Freddie. Uh, my sleeper candidate uh, this year is Mike Huckabee, the Republican running against Dale Bumpers in Arkansas. He's never run before. He's gonna surprise some people. He's gonna win? Uh, he's, <laughs> he has a chance of winning. Oh, <laughs> <Big> deal. <laughs> what? What, what an absolutely galvanizing <laughs> prediction. What do you say? The, uh, the tail hook scandal and the sexual harassment uh, charges in the Navy are going to accelerate the lifting of the restrictions on combat for women in the military. Jack. Tail bumpers couldn't be beaten with a stick. Yeah, the the uh, star of the convention will be Bill Bradley. The Washington Redskins will not move to Virginia. They, they're... Uh, uh, the, the, the people of Virginia will not, don't want them there, and, uh, and uh, this, the do. District of Columbia Come on. will... Uh, oh, will, my God. The, the, you want a needle or a hook? You got it. Go. Uh, the GATT, the Global Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, will pass by the end of the year after the French election. Bulletin. Virginia is for lovers and the Redskins. Next week, live from New York, it's the Democrats. Bye-bye. The McLaughlin Group. GE is proud to support the McLaughlin Group. GE. From residential to commercial lighting, we bring good things to life. For a transcript, send $5 to Federal News Service, 620 National Press Building, Washington, D.C., 20045. Specify program date. To obtain a free McLaughlin Group Viewer's Guide, write Viewer's Guide, Box 786, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 10159. Topics are selected by Mr. McLaughlin, and the opinions expressed are solely those of the participants. Join us next week, Monday through Thursday, beginning at 8 p.m., as the McNeil Lehrer News Hour teams up with NBC News for complete coverage of the Democratic.